Yeah, I know, everyone's sick of the term Souls-like, but as long as games that duplicate From Software's Dark Souls formula as closely as Mortal Shell keep coming out, we're gonna be stuck with it. This one condenses the idea of games like Bloodborne and Dark Souls into a compact package that should only take around 12 to 18 hours to beat. And it manages to introduce just enough smart new ideas to avoid feeling like old news to Souls veterans. It's both a compliment and a criticism when I say that no other Souls-like has done such a fine job of nailing the vibe of Dark Souls. It's apparent in the moody landscapes and the creepy NPCs muttering spooky lines. I pray that you do not find yourself upon the pyre. And it's especially evident in the enemies that come close to killing you with a single hit. In the first couple of hours, it can be brutally difficult to find your footing. And just in case that you doubted that this is anything other than an obsessive love letter to From Software's games, even the interface looks a little too familiar in some spots. But there are some clear differences, and Mortal Shell's name points to a big one. So you start off as a wraith-like creature who can barely take a hit, so survival depends on hopping into the corpses of four dead warriors you find scattered across the landscape like a necromancer hermit crab. It's a cool idea, as it allows you to switch between very different builds and alter your desired playstyle without spending ages carefully building stats. Shells also allow for a welcome second chance in combat, as dying will knock your wraith form out of your shell. If you can get back before enemies chop you down, your health will fully restore. You start off with Haros, a regular knight with balanced stats. He's kinda boring. I had a lot more fun when I found my personal favorite, Teal. He's a roguish character with a massive stamina pool for dodging, and that's essential to my playstyle. He got even better when I customized him by fleshing out his perk trees with currencies I earned from fighting. If you were struggling like I was early on, these upgrades can really pull your fat out of the fire. Mortal Shell didn't really click for me, for instance, until I upgraded Teal Shell so that sprinting no longer depletes stamina and incoming blows sometimes chop off stamina instead of health. After that, encounters that were maddeningly tough the first time sometimes became trifling, taking this from what I thought was one of the toughest Souls-likes I'd ever played to one of the easier ones. And in a neat twist, you can loot vials that allow you to switch from one of the shells on the fly, which is helpful when you run across a boss who gives you trouble while you're in a particular shell. The four discoverable weapons also allow for substantially different melee playstyles, but not with the same degree of freedom as the shells. Damage upgrades are scarce, and so I found it wise to focus on one weapon and sideline the others, at least until New Game Plus. But nothing sets Mortal Shell apart as much as its hardened mechanic, which turns your wraithy hero into unbreakable stone for the span of one blow. This serves as an indirect block, and it'll sometimes stagger enemies when their blades meet your stone skin. It allows for some strategies that are unique to Mortal Shell too, like hardening in mid-swing and then completing the attack after a boss's blow glances off of you. Harden does have a short cooldown so you can't spam it, but it's swift enough to encourage a touch more recklessness than I'm used to from the Souls games themselves. The only problem is that I find it encourages a very predictable playstyle where you run in, hit an enemy a couple of times, harden, and then jump back out. Get good at the timing and get a weapon and shell that suits you, and Mortal Shell's punishing difficulty can start to seem too easy and a little tedious. Speaking of timing, Mortal Shell also encourages parrying, as you can follow up perfect parries with a devastating blow that also restores a goodly chunk of health. It looks cool and it's immensely satisfying when it works. I personally struggled with the timing and in a way I never struggled with parrying in Sekiro. Fortunately, parrying isn't the only means of healing, so it's not essential if it doesn't agree with you. One place where Mortal Shell draws inspiration from outside the genre is in its exploration, which gave me a Zelda vibe. You have to venture into three distinct zones and beat their bosses to collect items that unlock a final battle. They're all a wonder to behold, particularly an enigmatic obsidian temple complex, but unfortunately the core swampy area connecting them all can be a chore to navigate through on account of its sameness. Sometimes though, the environment is unintentionally as devilish as any boss. All too often enemies would get stuck on a terrain, or I'd have to restart after getting trapped in a lock-on animation. 
Mortal Shell isn't as rich and complex as Pulse Souls games like Bloodborne or Sekiro, but it does make you work for victories and learn from your mistakes. It's a beautifully dark adventure, and thanks to its clever body swapping mechanic, it delivers much of the playstyle diversity and exploration of the best in the genre, but in a tidy and comparatively short package with a couple of attractive surprises of its own. For more on Mortal Shell, check out the first minutes of gameplay. And for another recent Souls-like, watch our review of Hellpoint. And for everything else, stick with IGN.